Good morning or good good evening or good day to everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us for the 2019 Who's Who in Students for One Health Global webinar. Uh, it's being hosted by the International Student One Health Alliance, or ISOA for short, and we're extremely happy that you can join us all. Uh, I'm Neil Vizzo. I'm the current president of ISOHA, and I'm a veterinary student at Iowa State University. Um, and then we can move to the next slide. We'll have a, a brief outline of just the webinar proceeding. Um, next slide, please. Thanks. Um, so we're going to start off by just introducing ourselves in ISOHA. Um, and then we're going get to get a short keynote in from Dr. Stroud. Uh, then we'll have a brief Q&A session where people can, and, oh, then we'll have, um, sorry, One Health student group presentations uh, where you can hear from your peers around the world in student One Health. Then we'll have the Q&A. Uh, we'll make a few announcements then, and then we'll be done. Uh, so we can move to the next slide, please. So in ESOHA, we've been working for about the past two years to find and connect uh, all the students studying and working in One Health across the globe. Our main aim is to educate, connect, and then inspire collaboration amongst all of our members across the world. And we've been working hard to generate a cohesive global student One Health community uh, in doing so. And as president, I've been assisting and helping our executive committee members and in their initiatives, um, which we'll be hearing more about soon. Uh, I've also been working to help formalize our structure as an organization as well as um, formalize external relations with other major health-related organizations across the globe. Uh, next slide, please. And as you can see there, I'm, I'm Neil Vizzo. Um, then if we can have the rest of the EXCO introduce themselves as well. Hello, everyone. My name is Anastasia Lambrew. I am a PhD candidate at Johns Hopkins studying global disease epidemiology, and I am your vice president for members. Um, I strive to find the One Health student groups around the globe and connect them. And I've also started our Global Council of Continent Representatives. Hi, everyone. My name is Emily Hardgrove. I am a dual veterinary and master's of public health student at the Virginia Maryland Regional College of Veterinary Medicine in the United States. As vice president for education, I develop learning opportunities for clubs, such as this webinar and our brand new mentorship program as well as sharing education resources on our website, Facebook page, and YouTube channel. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Paula Vioraganti, and I am a first year veterinary student at The Ohio State University um, in the US. I'm the VP of Advertising, so I help monitor and moderate the Facebook page, our Twitter page, um, just put out announcements through our email listservs about all the events um, and resources that we have um, for our student groups. And then uh, Salagna Chagraporti could not join today, unfortunately, um, but she's our Secretary General and she's currently a PhD candidate uh, at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. And she's kind of like the nerve center of ESOHA and she helps to coordinate all of our meetings, um, things like meeting minutes, just all those sort of administrative functions she does. Next slide, please. We would also like to recognize our incredible continent representatives from around the world who help work and support ESOHA and coordinate our One Health activities on their continent. And a lot of them are in attendance today. And uh, we have a very special guest with us today. Uh, Dr. Cheryl Stroud is the current executive director of the One Health Commission. Uh, for those of you who do not know what the One Health Commission is, um, it's one of the most prominent One Health organizations in the world. Uh, it serves to connect many of the different players in, in One Health, uh, including us students, as well as professionals uh, and organizations as well. So without further ado, um, we can pass the mic off to Cheryl and she can start uh, giving her presentation. Hi, thank you, Neil, and hello, everybody. This is so exciting to me to have everybody come together and get to know each other because I feel so strongly that we can accomplish so much more when we join hands. So thank you for joining us today, and um, I'm looking forward to sharing just a few comments with you. Hang on, i got to get the slides to work. So the One Health Commission has pretty much three major strategic priorities. We work with the students and with One Health community all around the world trying to get us connected, find out who's doing what and who, where our synergies are so we can do it together. So that's one of our major efforts. 
And then we're all about education, education not just of um, professional students, but of policymakers, lawmakers, funding agencies, those people who decide where the funding's going to go. And also we're starting to try to reach even earlier. Um, uh, um, some undergraduate programs are really engaging in One Health now. We're trying to reach down um, even earlier to primary and secondary, uh, and like the teachers for K through 12 and primary and secondary. And of course, one of the things that I enjoy doing the most is nurturing the next generation of leaders. So it's been a real pleasure for me to work with the ISOHA. So on the connecting front, some of you may know that in 2014, we did our first international who's who in One Health. You can actually go on the website and listen to those. It's fascinating to hear in 2014 some of the things that were going on around the world. Um, in 2016, we did it again in celebration of the first One Health Day. And then if you look on the right side of your screen, um, in 2015 was the first who's who in students for One Health. Um, that was led by uh, Lauren Briarly and Serena Selleck. Some of you might remember that. I know, Neil, you do, because you were one of the few undergrads who participated in that webinar. Um, so that was fun. You actually contacted me later and said, uh, am I the only student at Iowa State who's into One Health? So this is the, the, um, the, the Neil also led one in 2017 the second international who's who in students for One Health. So this is the third one where we're trying to bring students together. And it's so exciting because I know you guys are up to like 75 or 80 student groups around the world that we've been able to identify and try to, to get us connected. So thank you very much. Also on the connection front, we try to bring together organizations that are actively working um, to lead in the One Health space. So back last October, we did a synergizing One Health collaborations meeting. Um, next year, we'll probably try, or this year, 2019, we'll probably try to do it again and maybe make it public this time. Uh, so all the organizations you see on your screen right now, from USCDC, all, um, OSHEA, Sehun, uh, University of Geneva, um, the One Health Initiative, Planetary Health. Um, so all those organizations came together and did just about what we're doing today, sharing some of their initiatives. So that's really an important thing for us to do together. Um, I'm, hope, I'm hoping that all of you are familiar with One Health Day. It was launched by in a partnership by the One Health Commission, the One Health Initiative, and the One Health Platform in 2016. The top map here is it blew us away to see so many events held our first year out the gate with One Health Day. Um, and similarly in 2017 and then 2018. So I hope you guys are planning your event for this year and be sure to get them registered. Um, I just like to make you um, aware that there is the student competition. Hopefully you're all aware of that. The screen you're looking at now are the students who were involved who won. Um, awards in 2016. Uh, so um, it was really fun to see so many student groups put together amazing pre um, events and then you have to do all the kind of the paperwork to submit your event and, and you have to really kind of dot your I's and, and cross your T's and then we have an, a board of um, judges that you can find on the website um, who actually do the judging for, for the One Health Day. So I hope you're planning an event and might want to compete for for a prize. And then um, the 2017 winners were um, presented their awards at the International One Health Congress in Saskatoon last June. Um, we'll be announcing the, the 2018 winners hopefully soon. Since we don't have a major conference coming up this year, we'll probably be doing it as a press release. And I don't know, maybe we can do, Neil and group, maybe we want to do another webinar to, to feature those guys like we did for the 20, um, the 2016 group. So just a lot of fun things on the horizon to be thinking about. If you're thinking about planning an event and you need some ideas, if you go on the website, the One Health Day webpage, you can actually click on events in Africa or Asia or America uh, for each year and you can see descriptions of the events. The One Health platform um, assumed the map um, um, preparation for us in 2018. So you can also see, you have to kind of work your way through the menu, but you can also see descriptions of events. So that can be quite useful in getting ideas for planning your own event. 
So I want to make sure you're aware of that. Um, things that the Commission does to try to help us with this getting together in the One Health community is um, our One Health Happenings newsletter that some of you may be getting. We'll try to make sure that you're on the um, student listserv to get those because a lot of news is put out, not just about um, the One Health around the world, but we have a student section of that newsletter. I um, mean, would love for you guys to please, please, please send us any news from your part of the world so we can include it in the One Health Happenings. That's what it's for is to help us all be aware of what's going on. And then we also have an online One Health Opportunities Bulletin Board that we kind of are working together with the ISOHA Opportunities Board. So it's very nice to be sure that any opportunities, whether it be fellowships or postdocs or internships or online courses or, or summer um, programs, that they're posted so the world can, can see and find them. So that's really um, um, useful. And then the commission also has a, an evolving kind of growing One Health library. It's where our webinars get posted, um, a, a, a just anything that might be of interest to the One Health world. So if you know of something you'd like to see there, let me know. I also um, could use some more website support and we do that with volunteers often. I've got two or three that are waiting to be trained up now. So if anybody in your group would like to be kind of a remote um, One Health Commission website volunteer, um, just please let me know because that's, you know, a lot of what the commission does is with volunteers and it's a great way to get really actively involved and kind of in the middle of the mix. Um, on the education front, I was just mentioning our webinars. We do provide the webinar platform for other groups that don't have the means or mechanism to make their, um, their sessions, discussion sessions uh, public to a wider audience. So um, this is just some of the webinars that we've done, um, and I really need to update those on the web page, too. Um, so um, if any of you are in, near Washington, D.C., there is a One Health Academy group there that uh, meets monthly on the second Wednesday in the evening at the, um, at the um, American Society for Microbiology. And so we provide the webinar platform for that and um, be, be, would love to get you on their list, serve to to get notices that if they happen to come out when we're not doing a One Health happening, because we always include them there too. The so webinars are an important way that we educate. And then supporting the students is just a major, um, major thing for, for me. I just think it's so important and I enjoy it so much working with the, the students and want you to be aware that there is a student listserv sign up for you to get on the student listserv that the commission is um, happy to provide. And there's also, if um, some of your faculty, some people that you know are not students, if they'd like to be sure they're on the listserv, there's also a page on the One Health Commission's website that you can um, add yourself to the commission's One Health Community listserv. So let's stay connected by um, using the listserv for when we push out notices like about this webinar. And then I mentioned um, some of our action teams. One of our action teams is a One Health Education Task Force. We have an international component and a group from that um, One Health Education Task Force that's kind of focused on the U.S. Some of us uh, actually went to the National Science Teachers Association in the U.S. in Philadelphia last year and presented One Health teacher workshops um, to try to help teachers learn about One Health so they can take it to their K through 12 or primary secondary education students. What I want you guys to be aware of is if any of you would like to take One Health Education materials into um, a local school near you, if you go on this One Health Education Resources page, it's under Resources and Services on the Commission's website, you can actually click on this K-12 Educational Resources and we're queuing up, like pulling together in one place a lot of resources that are out there that are One Health relevant that you can just grab and take into the classroom. And please make any teachers that you're aware of aware of that because in, uh, in our mind, one Health education is just so important for what we're doing. Another one of our teams is our bat rabies education team. Um, it's focused right now in the Americas, although I know bat rabies is a problem all around the world. A lot of countries, canine rabies is the major focus. But uh, here in the, in the Americas, we realized that nobody was teaching children and parents and teachers that bats could harbor rabies and not to touch a bat. They're so cute and cuddly looking. 
you see one on the ground, you really want to pick it up, but you really better not do that. If there's a bat that you can touch, there's something really terribly, terribly wrong. So that's one of our education efforts that we're really proud of here in the States um, and in the Americas. We've actually got um, Latin America and people involved with that too. We'd love to see programs like that expand around the world, but we know canine rabies is a, a major problem for other parts of the world. So we also are extremely proud of the One Health Social Sciences Group. We put out a call last November to, um, it was kind of the One Health Commission's call to the social sciences world to get more social scientists involved in One Health because we realize we're never going to solve a lot of our wicked problems um, just with kind of our um, chemistry and, and biology and medicine scientists. We've really got to get the behaviorist and the economist, the people who know how to change uh, underlying attitudes. So they've just run a webinar series. In fact, it's kind of ongoing. Um, the one that I don't have on here is one that was done. Some of you may be aware of. It was um, One Health uh, in Latin America. It was focused on Spanish speakers. It was run in Spanish. So I couldn't understand it, but uh, we were excited to do that for Spanish speakers. And I know that that's a problem. I wish I could find a way to offer multiple languages in a webinar like this. So if anybody knows how to do that, let us know. Um, and then one of the things I really want to make sure you guys are aware of is um, in Washington, D.C., the Smithsonian Institute has created a fabulous exhibit called Outbreak. And if you get to D.C., please go and see it. It will be there for three years. But here's the cool thing. This um, exhibit has been prepared to travel. So the email address is at the bottom of the screen. Um, you could communicate with those people or communicate with me or any of these SOHA, and we will connect you if you would like to bring this exhibit to your school or to a library near you or you know, anywhere in your region. And, and it, it, I, from what I understand, they're able to translate it and, and bring it to, to other regions. So that's very exciting to see this exhibit. Um, it is just about zoonotic diseases, so it's not the full scope of all the arenas of One Health, but it is so exciting because millions of people go through these exhibits. And now you see this uh, image at the bottom left. People are being educated about One Health and how important it is. And at least they're understanding it from the uh, zoonotic disease realm. It's up to the rest of us to help them understand some of the other arenas that are begging for One Health um, interactions and collaborations. So before I end, I just want to say thank you to all the sponsors um, for the commission. It's because of organizations that believe in what we're doing and support us financially that we're able to provide webinar platform and meeting platforms and listservs and newsletters. So um, if anybody knows of an organization that would like to help the commission keep the lights on really seriously, then please let me know because um, funding is always an issue for One Health. And I know we don't have to tell you guys that. You know it already in a very, very real way. So thank you very much to all of you guys for participating and thank you to ASOHA for organizing this and for allowing me to share some of um, the commission's work. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Shroud, and thank you so much for your support. We're going to do a quick slide change real fast and get to the meat of our presentation. So, the previous slide, this slide here, is a map of our One Health student groups around the globe. Um, we are a board, as I said, of students, supporting students around the world. And today's major purpose was to highlight all of you. So I will be your host as we will now hear from many of these amazing groups um, working in One Health around the world. So if you see your slides pop up, please raise your hand and we'll give you the mic capability. And we're going to be starting today off with the New England student for One Health Group. So next slide, please. Hey everyone, thank you so much. I'm excited to start off our student portion. Um, so I'm the president of the Students for One Health Club at the Cummins School of Veterinary Medicine at Tufts University. My name is Evan. And I just wanted to also briefly say that I'm actually one of the North American reps for ESOHA. So for those of you in North America, you may have gotten an email from me or maybe um, we'll be hearing from you in the future. So if we could go to the next slide, please. 
Great. So I just wanted to briefly um, describe a few of the events that we do at, on campus at Tufts. Um, sort of our big spring event is what we call Cadaver Exchange. So that's made up of um, Tufts veterinary medical and dental students. And we all meet in Boston at the med school and we bring our um, domestic and wildlife cadavers. Of course, they're human cadavers for the medical and dental students. Uh, we always center this event around a theme. So last year it was cardiovascular. This year it's musculoskeletal. Um, and the morning of the event is sort of just presentations by the different students. And then in the afternoon, we actually get in the lab and we sort of rotate and look at all the different cadavers. And it's just a really exciting opportunity for students from different disciplines to, um, to learn about the other disciplines. Another thing we do is um, we go to the North Street Elementary School, um, which is here in Grafton, where the vet school is, um, and we give presentations to the students. So um, like the, the picture at the top of this top right of the slide here, um, that's an example of some of the presentations that we give. Um, so it's third graders, so the, the level is not very complex, but they at least get exposed to One Health, and we also have very interactive um, activities for them to do. So some of the themes that we're doing this year, again, are, are the bones, so comparative anatomy. We're talking about Lyme disease from a perspective of how do you protect you and your pet from Lyme disease. Um, and then we're also going to have one on nutrition about where food comes from and why food safety is so important. We also do a lot of lunch talks on campus. So we collaborate with other groups like Veterinarians for Global Solutions, um, Waze. There's just a lot of other groups on campus. And we bring in One Health researchers and then um, focus on One Health policy. And we also do uh, something called the, war, the um, Earth Day cleanup. So we're out in the community um, cleaning up uh, for for uh, Earth Day in April. Um, and I, I see that this slide wasn't recently updated. Um, I also wanted to just briefly mention something else that we do. It's called the One Health Night, and that's coming up for us this semester. And basically, that's where we have um, small groups of students. Um, they're all given a One Health problem, and they have to come up with a solution for it. And um, they have a diverse group of Tufts faculty uh, to go and talk to um, who have expertise in different areas, human medicine, veterinary medicine, um, conservation biology, that kind of thing. And so it's sort of a, a way to practice um, using One Health to solve problems. So those are some of the events we do. And um, yeah, thank you. Thanks so much for sharing. I'm sure we would all like to come to that One Health night. Now we have the Western One Health Club from Canada. Hi, um, I'm Jocelyn Tan, and I'm the first year representative of the One, Western One Health Club, and I'm currently health, studying health sciences. Um, these are our social medias if you're interested in following us. We have a Facebook group and an email. Um, do you mind going to the next slide, please? Um, these are a few of the initiatives that we started this year. A little bit about our club. It was founded just this September by our president, and it's comprised of a president, VP events, communications, finances, and two first year reps. Our mentor is Dr. Olea Popolka, who's the chair of One Health module at Western. And in less than a year, we've been able to gather about 69 new members. And it was ratified by our University Students Council last month. So the first thing you see here on your left is journal meetings. And they're held about once a month for general members. So every month there's a theme. And this one was gene editing, restoring dystrophy expression in canine models of muscle, muscular dystrophy. So our two analyzers are uh, do research on the topic, present a meeting, and people come and attend and ask them questions on how it relates to One Health. Uh, the second thing that we normally do is a plant sale for air purification. We normally set up in the library, and this is just to get people aware of um, One Health and fundraise for our club so we can have some funding for our other events. Um, the thing you see on the right is our race to research, which was our most successful event. We uh, talked about why people should get a research position, essentials to getting research position, um, how to find it. And we had students to talk, the students who talked were, had research experience from surgery simulation, epidemiology, autism, things like that. And we got 30 new members to sign up for the club. Um, we're excited for our new initiatives. We have um, elections taking place for president next month. 
And the Biomedical Students Association has asked us to produce a five minute video um, with the undergraduate chair on um, intent to register. So thank you very much for listening. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much. And yeah, we will be having a question and answer period at the end. So hold all your questions and you can get them answered by any student group or by the board or even Dr. Shroud. Next, we have the One Health Club um, Students Committee in Chile. Can you please raise your hand if you're presenting? I think it's Tulio. Go ahead, Tulio. Okay, well, um, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, my name is Tulio Ajardo. Uh, I'm a veterinarian from uh, Chile, and we have a very recent, uh, quite recent uh, group here uh, with uh, five members at, at the moment. Uh, with Gabriela Senjo from University of Chile, Soledad Cabal, uh, a teacher uh, of chemistry, Isidora Novoa, um, a veterinarian from uh, Universidad Mayor, and our sponsor, uh, the PhD, um, Daniela Figueroa, and the head of SIACHI is a research center focusing, focusing in One Health. So uh, we noticed that um, uh, we all know about uh, uh, the One Health concept. Uh, I mean, the professional uh, part of the, of the One Health, but um, we noticed that uh, the community is uh, a little bit a part of this. So the main objective of this uh, community is focuses in the work with the related with the community. Uh, next slide, please. Um, uh, I think that there is a, no. Sorry, Tulio, I think we only received one slide from your group. Really? Uh, oh, well, don't, don't worry. Um, but um, well, the, the, the next slide was about uh, uh, work directly with the community by, by uh, three objective, objectives, um, educate, integrate, and promote. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. That's really exciting work in One Health. Next, we have the One Health Club at the University of Georgia. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. My name is Hannah Kemmelmacher. I'm the president of One Health Club at UGA. And to whomever is progressing the slides, uh, there are some graphics that will come up if you keep clicking. Thank you. What I have here is just a few examples of some of what we do. We are actually a group of both undergraduate and graduate level students. So we have veterinary students, couple of medical students, though they are hard to reach, pharmacy students, graduate students, a little bit of faculty. We try to be as integrated as possible. What we do mainly is present research talks throughout the year, about one a semester. So there are some examples there on the left side. Uh, our most successful ones have been, for example, a joint meeting between a veterinarian and a doctor who's also a lawyer presenting on physician-assisted suicide and animal euthanasia, the ethical concepts. Our suture clinic up right there, you can see the banana model that we stitched back together. Uh, no bananas were hurt in the making of the suture clinic, but uh, that is one of our most successful events as well. It's a very exciting thing to have uh, suture techniques presented to an interdisciplinary group, usually by veterinary, uh, veterinary residents that are affiliated with the University of Georgia, um, and they present fantastic techniques that can be used also in the field. We try also to have some community participation. We also do cleanups that some of the other groups have mentioned before, and we have collaborated with um, several dozen different organizations on our campus, which is a very big campus. Uh, for example, to collect relief supplies for a hurricane relief initiative, we are very proud to lead that initiative across our campus. Um, so we are about a four-year-old club. Uh, we have uh, almost 300 subscribers to our email list, but if you could please progress the slide. One more. 
Thank you. But we do have a lot of challenges, which I did want to present today. Uh, it's hard to see on the bottom there, but we often get a very low turnout for our meetings, sometimes less than 10. Sometimes it'll be officers plus only five different members who can uh, come to our research talks. And the middle graphic you can see there is our social media following can also sometimes be a little bit sparse. Uh, we do have almost 300 followers on Facebook, but uh, if you can see, the number on the right is how many people actually respond to our events. Sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's two. And on the right there, we also have a very low budget. That's not a recent budget, uh, but we decided to make our club more open access by not having dues. So we grant rights to try to get our funding. Uh, and sometimes that can be a little bit difficult. So we are definitely in the middle of reaching out and trying to get more ideas for our club trying to get diverse people to present us with different ways we can increase our resources and our outreach so that that number in the account and so that that number of responses to our meetings hopefully increases from what it is now. And I do invite everybody, uh, if you would like to, uh, to connect with us, it would be absolutely fantastic to get in touch. And I've heard some incredible ideas already. I'm very excited to be uh, exposed to the rest of the ideas that are going to be presented today. Thank you guys so very much. Thank you. Thanks for talking about your accomplishments and also challenges, because I think all of us in different student groups around the world have very similar challenges and we can all coordinate and collaborate on how to address those. Thank Our you. next group is um, the Ilium One Health Association group um, in Malaysia. Okay. Hi, everyone. We are from Malaysia representing International Islamic University Malaysia One Health Association Club, where mm -hmm. the logo is on the top left. This club is under Mayahun and you say the logos are at the bottom right and left where we have collaboration with One Health Workforce. Next slide, please. Uh, okay, uh, next I will proceed with our project. So far in previous year, the, the program that we have conducted is community education with One Health approach towards preventing infectious disease in conjunction with World Health Day 2018. This program was to give an awareness to the local residents about the health by conducting an in, in interactive exhibition and provide some exciting games such as Kids Zanya Wars uh, for the children. Uh, as you can see, the picture on the above right side shows the community uh, consisting, uh, sorry, uh, the picture on the below uh, shows that the community consisted of different ages who came to one of our booths during the exhibition to listen to the explanation about the health from uh, one of our community committees. Uh, secondly, uh, we also have conducted a community service which was cleaned up the residence area together with the community to ensure that the local resident can apply what they have learned during the exhibition as well as to make them have better understanding on the relationship between cleanliness and health. Okay, our upcoming program will be had uh, this April entitled One Health Communication for Behavioral Impact in Kuantan Pahang. Under this program, uh, there are two events, which the first one is a talk, where we want to educate them by, uh, by spreading the awareness on health. Then on the next day, we will have a community service with the residents there to apply the concept of health awareness that we have listened to the talk uh, a day before. So we will go there uh, to clean the surrounding. So uh, uh, that's all, thank you. Thank you, and it's really great to see that you're working in your local community as well. We will next have the One Health Group of Nepal, um, Pakulihawa. <laughs> Are you here, Rajesh? Rajesh, could you raise your hand, please? Go ahead. OK. OK, thank you. Uh, thank you for, so much for providing me the, uh, this opportunity. And uh, we have uh, we have this one of Nepal Poklua, which was established in uh, 2017 uh, AD. Uh, since uh, two years we have been working in the field of one health and uh, this animals uh, humans and plants uh, in uh, it is uh, it's one of the uh, organization in uh, Tilburn University 
Institute of Agriculture and Animal Science, Pokhlia uh, and uh, we have been uh, doing uh, various kinds of work, like uh, we work in the field of animal sectors, awareness among local people, and genetic effects of uh, different diseases. And we have uh, posted in social media link as uh, in this uh, presentation, and you can uh, watch our activities. This next slide, please. Um, this um, this uh, project includes our um, uh, enhancing the public awareness among the importance of genetic disease, the free animal health camp, vaccination camp, and organized seminar, workshop, mobilize and encourage students to play in one health mm -hmm. issue. And these are these are the few one of the um, which could which we could uh, include in this our session. Next, please. And uh, and uh, these are uh, these are also some of the activities and this these are quite similar to that slide. And do we have another another slide? And not not this one. But, uh, was, uh, thank you for your help and support. And we hope, uh, we hope your uh, future collaboration with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. We'd love to collaborate with you as well. And it's great to see how active your group is. Our next presentation is from the One Health Research um, Seedbed. Can you please raise your hand? Uh, good Go morning. Ahead. Good morning. I am Mayra Rios. I am a free year student of veterinary medicine at Universidad de la Salle. The One Health Research Seedbed of the Faculty of Agricultura Science of the Universidad de La Salle of Bogota, Colombia. Group created eh, of February 18 to 2013. Its manager is the Dr. Diego Soler Tobar, and currently it has 12 members. Uh, our mission is to foster the promotion, supporting, and generation of scientific processes of the undergraduate and graduate student of the university with the support of research teacher from curiosity and personal and group motivation in topics related to the human, animal, and environmental health uh, from the social, economic, community, and academic dimension. Next um, slide, please. At this moment, we have four projects about different topics related to One Health. One of the is identification of tickers in wild and domestic felid in Colombia. Auxidet uh, has participated in civic meetings, symposium, and congresses, both national and international like the eco Hell 2018. For example, uh, one of the projects that, that is about the correct status of genre amblyomma in Colombia was at the top of, of <clears throat> one on the seeded meetings in 2018. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And the message to everyone, we're going to try and translate our webinar into Spanish after today. And hopefully in the future, we will also expand to other languages. Our next student group is UNIMAS, One Health Student Club in Malaysia. It seems like you are self-muted. Could you hit the microphone so we can allow you microphone access? There you go. Uh, all right, already. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Timayam, and I will. I am the president of Unimas One Health Student Club. So uh, Unimas actually stands for University Malaysia Sarawak, and as the name implies, we are based in Sarawak, Malaysia. So um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, for me, myself, I am a medical student, and for the whole committee, we comprise of uh, medical students, mostly year four and uh, third year also. So we are a committee under our amazing lecturer, Dr. Ashley, our club advisor.
and uh, if any activities or any um, any news or anything you can contact dr ashley and also me uh, in this email stated so now let's get to the interesting part which is the clubs activities uh, in 2016 we actually had a pbl in situ in langong uh, i'm sorry <laughs> and we have in 2017 we have a one health explorers in gunung gading uh, 2018, we have Baku National Park Discovery and Cebu Community Project. So all of these uh, activities, we actually include um, a lot of uh, universities like uh, UPM uh, uh, and a lot of other universities around Malaysia. So we actually incorporate uh, the One Health concept uh, inside our activities and create awareness uh, in a lot of zoonotic diseases. Like this year, 2019, we are trying to uh, incorporate awareness in uh, rabies because uh, up to now, there's already uh, reported death cases of rabies, uh, uh, 12 death cases of rabies in Sarawak. So it's a bit alarming. That's why we are trying to actually incorporate awareness and prevention in the society um, for this year. Uh, so it's a big event. Uh, we are trying our best uh, to make it happen. And if you want to join us or anything, uh, do contact us. Um, so I guess uh, that's all from me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Congratulations on your efforts, and it's really great to see a group of medical students as well. Our next group is the USIM One Health um, Students Group. It might also be called UPN. Hello? Hello, we can hear you. No? Uh, okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ira. I'm a year five medical student from Malaysia uh, and I'm the president of USIM, One Health Student Club. Uh, USIM uh, stands for University Science Islam Malaysia. Uh, the following is our contact email and our Facebook page. Thank you so much for this opportunity to talk to you guys about the activities done in our club. Uh, our club is actually very new. We have just started the club about six months ago, so there isn't much program that we have done and can be shared. And our our club, uh, club is mostly composed of medical students from first year to fifth year and for now but we hope to reach more students from other faculties as well. So for the first picture here, uh, this is our first program and it's called for Marginals and the Privileged Community in an every territory in Canada. Uh, it was a Swedish program and the program was joined by dental and medical students from our CMD. Basically what we did was we had um, mouth and hand and health support And in addition, we have another upcoming trip to activities in Integra uh, this March. And this program is focused on men from all medical students, training uh, students, and health students, and lecturers with different backgrounds from various universities. And this project will focus mainly on creating awareness on the risk of zoonotic infections among the children of, in of the indigenous community. Uh, so then we will show activities to handle animals. We will sometimes get students from our club to join any community services to help with free medical checkup and also demonstrate the like the proper hand hygiene to the community. Next, for the second picture, uh, every month uh, since December last year, we will go to one primary school for dengue prevention and control program, and then we collaborated with Bobo Boy team. Uh, Bobo Waiting is a famous cartoon in Malaysia and we just teach the students about dengue and we did some cleaning around the school to eliminate uh, at this breeding area. So I think this is just a few programs that we have done so far in our newly established club. Uh, we hope to do more after this so we can serve the community and at the same time, we can maybe empower them with knowledge on infectious diseases and also knowledge on proper hand hygiene and thus hopefully creating a healthier community. I think that's all from me. Thank you very much for listening. Great projects and great start to your work. Um, congrats on starting up your group and let Isoha know or any other groups around the world know um, if you need any assistance. Okay. Our next group is the One Health student group from UPM in Malaysia. Please raise your hand. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, 
<clears throat> My name is Roger Mohamed Iqbal. They call me Iqbal. Uh, I'm currently the president of One Health UPM, um, and I'm taking a biomedical science uh, undergraduate. So basically, One Health UPM are located within Selangor, Malaysia. We are nearby the Mayohun uh, HQ. So below there, I already placed my uh, our uh, contact email and our social media group page. And at center, you could see our logo, which we try to promote around UPM. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, for the club projects, for the first one, we conduct a program called Adopt Shop, where it is done on 6th of October, 2018, where we collaborate with IRUM. Uh, the objective of this program is to create awareness about the importance of adopting pets rather than shopping them. And also we place in the importance of awareness about infectious disease that can affect the pets and how to prevent them. Okay, for the next program, which is One Health Rabies Outreach, where it is going to be done in next month with, within 12 to 14th of April, 2019, where we're going to collaborate with IVSA, International Veterinary Student Association, Malaysia, and the UNMAS student, where we will create an awareness about rabies. Because as you know, uh, as the previous speaker from uh, UNMAS said that there's a increase there's an increase of case of rabies within Malaysia, especially within Sarawak and Pahang. So we we are planning to fly to Sarawak and to create an awareness program there. So the community and students over there are known uh, are known about the awareness or the importance of rabies and how to prevent them. And there's another program which I didn't state uh, within the slide where we are going to create a rabies, uh, rabies run. So basically it's a half marathon where it uh, includes the theme of color run. So basically we're trying to uh, make that program as large as possible uh, because we're uh, planning to target, to create an awareness about rabies within the state of Selangor. So we're, we're, that, that program is still in planning. So other than that, uh, I will end my presentation by saying thank you to Aiswaha by conducting this webinar. And uh, if any of you guys would like to contact us and collaborate with us, we would be uh, happy to, to do that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing and good luck with your One Health Rabies event in April. Thank you. We will now be hearing from Emory students for One Health. Good morning, everyone. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yes, you sound great. Perfect. Hi, everyone. My name is Alexia Rodriguez, and I'm here representing Emory students for One Health. Uh, we're a student organization at the Rollins School of Public Health at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, in the US. Uh, we're a relatively new group. ESOH was started in the fall of 2018 um, by public health students who identified a need for a more intersectional approach to uh, public health here at Rollins. They were and we continue to be supported and mentored um, by the CDC's One Health office. The primary goal of our organization is to provide students uh, from all disciplines a unified platform for One Health-based education, social interaction, activism, and engagement. And part of this goal is to just introduce students uh, to One Health and then connect them with professors working in One Health-related topics. Uh, next slide, please. In efforts to further our mission among public health students, ESOH has organized speaker events with the school public health faculty doing One Health related research, connected with local One Health professionals and engaged students in field activities. Uh, this semester, we have created a full calendar of events, including a veterinary led tour of Zoo Atlanta, pictured here, uh, focused on zoonotic disease surveillance and protecting um, patrons from hazards during their visits. Um, a guest lecture from the Chattahoochee Riverkeepers organization here in Atlanta. Um, a behind the scenes tour of the Georgia Aquarium focused on One Health research 
and a guest lecture by Emory Professor Dr. Thomas Gillespie, um, whose research focuses on global health and biodiversity conservation. Um, currently, we have over 150 um, members on our listserv, and we have pretty good turnout for our events. We're averaging about 30 people um, for those speaker events. Um, and in the near future, we plan to really open our membership to all Emory students and faculty um, in order to encourage interdisciplinary collaboration. So we're really proud to represent Emory in this webinar and thank you. Thank you for sharing. It's great to hear about your events. And once again, let us know if you need any help starting up, but it sounds like you're off to a great start. Our next presentation is from the University of Eloran Students One Health Initiative in Nigeria. It looks like you've self muted your microphone. If you can click on your microphone, we can let you speak. Hello. 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 Hello, can you speak a little bit louder, please? Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, good. This is fine. Good afternoon. Am I clear enough? Yes, Hello? we can hear you now. Hello? My name is Latifa. Hello? My name is Latifa. I'm from the University of Illori. I'm a veterinary medical student, penultimate year, and I'm representing the University of Illori Students One Health Initiative. Um, basically, we are we just recently initiated the club here in Nigeria, and um, it's actually one of the first that we're having here in Nigeria. So it's um, really all starting newly. Um, we recently established this 2018 December and we started our main events around January 2019, which was this year. And um, okay, can we go to the next slide, please? Next slide. Please. Next slide. Okay, so um, we started up with a, a total member of about 100 and Nine. We had uh, 109 members starting up with us, and we, it was actually surprising because we didn't expect so much to turn up. Because here in Nigeria, the One Health Initiative is not really developed that much. Most people don't know about the issue, and um, most people don't know about the issue. And coming up with this, it was actually surprising to some people that such an initiative even existed in the first place. So we started off with a total of 109 members, and because the initiative is not well developed or known, we decided to start up with an orientation program where we initiate the initiated members and some other people that were around at the point were oriented about the idea of One Health and the whole theme. So the theme of the orientation was basically um, the One Health initiative and its importance in Nigeria. And it was a success, but then the, uh, the turn up really much because you have people not really showing up for this kind of things around here. So we also started with um, monthly social media awareness programs where we actually start um, a Twitter live feed um, awareness and also on WhatsApp, we create a group and we actually try to enlighten ourselves about a specific disease. We started with antimicrobial resistance and it was actually great that time. And that was for January. And for February, we, we went about waste disposal health effects in Nigeria because the waste disposal mechanism here is terrible and it was it's really bad. It's like the main cause of most problems here. So the after the waste program issue, we went ahead to start a podcast which we started with the waste disposal health effects talk as well. And it was also really nice. We had people actually listening to it and we're actually able to keep on going. So um, our next, uh, our main problems here is actually commitment. Finding people committed to the issue. <laughs> um, the people that actually joined us from the beginning, they seemed committed at first, but I think, I don't know, we just started all, Lately, with motivation or something, so the commitment is not really as strong and 
fit tight. Then we also have a problem with getting funding because um, most people really don't know about the initiative, I guess, and we, we find it really hard to get someone to actually fund our program. So most of the programs are just on standstill, like stagnant for now, okay. but we hope to actually get more um, support and we could also get some links to meet up with people that would actually be willing, organizations that are willing to sponsor this kind of event here in Nigeria, then no problem. And recently, we're actually planning on holding a program on the World TV Day, which is coming up this March. And um, we're, because of the funding issue, we decided to streamline it down to just uh, a form of campaign. It's going to be more of an online campaign where we're going to meet up. We're going to meet up with people physically and we're going to talk with them about the World TV issue. We're going to make videos about it. I'm going to post it online to also enlighten people. So it's basically just a campaign just to enlighten people because we're trying to do things that would not really need things that would not really need funding much. And um, we would actually appreciate it also if any of the One Health groups in here in Africa or anywhere around would love to collaborate with us. We would actually appreciate that. And we are also happy to be on this platform with you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for presenting. And Isoha would love to share your awareness campaigns and podcasts on all of our social media as well. Thank you. Thank you that very much. Our next presentation will be coming from UConn Students for One Health. Can you please raise your hand if you will be presenting for this group? Last call, do we have anyone here from the UConn Students for One Health group in the United States? University of Connecticut. Uh, we will ask again at the end of the presentation if you are back, um, but we're going to move on for now. Our next group is an introduction on the Vietnam One Health University Network. Could you please raise your hand? Thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. My full name is Nguyen Thị Hien from Vietnam. I am working as a monitoring and evaluation specialist at the National Coordinating Office of Vietnam One Health University Network, or shortly VOHUN. So today I'm going to introduce a little bit about VOHUN and the activities of 15 One Health student clubs in Vietnam. Firstly, VOHUN was established in 2011 with the support of USAID. And at the beginning of Vohun had three core universities in Hanoi, and now we have 20 universities in all regions of Vietnam with different backgrounds, such as um, medicine and pharmacy, public health, nursing, veterinary, and husbandry, and some other disciplines. So uh, our first One Health Student Clubs in Vietnam was launched in 2016. Now we have 13 clubs across uh, 20 member universities, and we reach reaching more than 1,000 undergrad, uh, 1, undergraduate students from a variety of disciplines. So each student club will have a mentor who is a lecturer well trained in One Health, and some clubs have students from two universities with different backgrounds. So can you next slide, next slide please? Next slide. Okay, so um, the main activities of One Health Student Clubs in Vietnam, we have the two level for the club level. Um, can you back? Sorry. Uh, uh, for the club level, we have um, the, the student have the weekly and the monthly uh, seminar. In this seminar, uh, they will uh, learn each other, and uh, the topic of the seminar will be the One Health core competencies, One Health problems, and some um, genetic disease. And the second one, they have some field trips to the uh, community. Um, and uh, 
to learn one health in the reality. And they also have some exchange activities with some other university in the same prison, and they uh, organize some small contests by themselves to like deepen their knowledge on one health. Uh, from the national level, we are the National Coordinating Office of Bohun. So we uh, have some competition for the so for the own One Health Student Clubs in Vietnam. Sorry, can you next slide? Yes. Um, so in 2000 and uh, 2017, we have the on health, uh, on health competition for uh, 13 on health student clubs, and uh, we have some very interesting um, round for them to uh, introduce themselves and also uh, compete with each other to show their knowledge on one health. And in uh, 2018, on in March, we have uh, an Olympic one health competition for uh, also for 13 student clubs in Vietnam. And uh, this year, we are going to the, have the first, very first international one health camp, where we will invite the students from some other countries to Vietnam, such as. Um, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Thailand. So I'm very happy to share this um, uh, news with uh, anyone in the from uh, Malaysia and Indonesia here. So you can, um, if you have chance, you can join with us in, in the International One Health Camp in Vietnam. And uh, also, we have some uh, communication campaigns for the all the activities of the One Health Student Club in Vietnam to prevent some uh, kind of disease such as rabies and AMR. In those activities, the students will come to the committee to um, uh, present some uh, knowledge about uh, rabies and AMR and help them to um, have some protection uh, before you know, between uh, with to against those disease so uh, we also have some team, build, team building activities for the other um, for on the on your student club in Vietnam and um, I think uh, today I just have some very general information so if you have any other questions just uh, contact us uh, through some email and uh, the fan page uh, at the bottom of the slide thank you very much Thank you very much. It's exciting to see 20 universities coming together, working in One Health, and good luck with your One Health camp. Yeah, thank you. Next, we have Iowa One Health presenting. Hey guys, it's Neil again. Uh, is my audio working out well? Yes, you sound great. Excellent, thank you, Anastasia. Uh, so in Iowa One Health, um, we were effectively founded in uh, 2016 for the planning of the inaugural 2016 Iowa One Health Conference. That's mostly the, the purpose and work of what we do. Um, so on November 5th, we held our first Iowa One Health Conference uh, at Iowa City at the University of Iowa. Um, and that was to increase awareness um, and increase collaboration regarding One Health within the state. And that was kind of a joint venture between Iowa State University and the med school there, uh, and the University of Iowa and the public health school there, as well as the med school there. Um, and it was mostly a student-driven effort, of course. And we got 61 people to attend, actually from around the globe, um, including uh, one person from Bangladesh and two from Canada. Um, and that composed a, that, that was a wide strata of education levels and disciplines that showed up to that first conference. Um, and for our second one in 2017, um, we, we basically improved upon what we previously had done in the 2016 inaugural conference. Um, we increased engagement from people all across the state. Um, we brought in more speakers. We uh, had people from every major university represented there, including Iowa State University, um, University of Iowa, Drake University, uh, as well as Des Moines University. So all the big universities within the state of Iowa were represented there. Um, 50 plus attendees were, were there. Um, we won the Student American Veterinary Medical Association One Health Grand Challenge, uh, as well as uh, we were co-winners of the Global One Health Day Student Event Competition, along with uh, McCary University in Africa. Uh, so the third 
2018 conference, we just continue to expand our successes previously. Uh, and that one was actually in Ames, Iowa for the first time. Um, and we gained even further recognition for the One Health concept in uh, Iowa. And of note, for the second conference, um, we actually were able to work with Governor Kim Reynolds of the state of Iowa to declare November 2017 as Iowa One Health Month. So that was a major success of ours. Uh, a big goal of ours was to achieve recognition of One Health at the student level, at the academic level, at the institutional level, uh, or at multiple institutional levels, as well as at the governmental level. So we were able to achieve that in getting that gubernatorial proclamation. Um, and if you can move on to the next slide, that'd be awesome. Um, it looks like, okay. Is there a little bit of a glitch there? Regardless, um, underneath that one uh, picture there, we just have some basic information on our basic structure and what we might want to do with the conference in the future. Um, so the composition of our committee that actually plans the conference uh, consists of either a chair or two co-chairs year to year, um, as well as faculty advisors, one of, us, one of which is joining us today, actually, Dr. Claren Drayson um, from Iowa State University College of Veterinary Medicine, as well as there's individual session planners. Uh, we have people who uh, do promotion and PR and people who run on-site logistics, so just getting rooms ready and that sort of thing for the conference. Uh, as far as future directions for the conference, we're thinking we're going to take a gap year um, and kind of plan out our next move and how exactly we're going to expand One Health within the state of Iowa. Um, we want to connect with other regional One Health groups. There are actually quite a few from the American Midwest who were not able to join us today, unfortunately, um, but perhaps they can do so in future years. Um, and we might even want to pursue a Midwestern One Health conference. We want to bring together um, state government stakeholders. That's a big objective of ours moving forward. Um, and we also have a, a large antimicrobial resistance research efforts ongoing um, centered out of Iowa State University that we might want to partner with to pursue future conferences. Um, I also just wanted to say that it is just uh, extremely exciting and extremely humbling just to be one of many different One Health institutions and One Health groups, One Health student groups across the globe that are all part of this global One Health movement. Um, I wanted to echo Georgia, uh, some, of your, some of your problems you've been having. Sometimes attendance can be kind of hard to achieve. Um, for every for every list service, it seems like we email about these conferences. We get maybe one person on average to actually attend. So PR is just huge. I'm uh, getting the word out about One Health and what One Health can do for the world. Um, and that's a lot of what our efforts have been in Isoha thus far as well. So uh, I would heavily encourage everybody just to really be on their game as far as promotion. Um, always be ready to talk about One Health and what good it can do for the world. And I think that'll really, really help our movement uh, within each individual group as well as globally. And you can contact us there at uh, iowaonehealth at gmail.com if, if you want to do any collaboration or just communicate in general. Thank you for sharing all this exciting work. Um, and it would be great to see more One Health conferences around the world and also more recognition from government entities of One Health. Next. We have the University of Antioquia in Colombia, who will be presenting for you today. Could you raise your hand, please? Is it going to be Diego? Once again, anyone here for the University of Antioquia um, does not look like anyone is raising their hand. Once again, we'll come back to you at the end if someone from your group is here, but we'll move on. One Health Nepal from Rampur. Hi there. Hello, can you hear us all right? Yes, we, I can hear you. 
Hello. Hello, we're ready for your presentation. Thanks for joining us. Yes, we are ready. Just go ahead whenever you're ready. Can you see your slide up? No, I can't see my slides. We have your first overview slide up on our GoToWebinar screen. An overview about your group. Yes. <coughs> Are you in the GoToWebinar platform screen? Can we help you? Uh, yes, we are on the screen, but we are not seeing our slides on the screen. Um, is it possible to present as best you can? I've just confirmed that um, our audience is seeing your slide. But we are not seeing our slides. Uh, we are seeing the slides of uh, you, uh, University of Antioquia, Colombia. Oh, it must be um, an internet. I think there's a lag in when the slides are popping up. Um, your slide has just popped up. If you can maybe refresh your browser or. Okay, I'll try it. Um, refresh. Or if you want to just present off of your, your own slide there and we can switch slides here, you can tell us. Um, but your first slide about the overview of your group and your email and all of your social media is currently up. If you like, we can also come back to you in a bit. Uh, yes, we are ready now. You are ready now? Okay. Yeah, okay. Can I start? Yes, please go ahead. <clears throat> okay, we are one of the student group from Nepal by the name Walent Nepal. And we were established in 2014 and we are recognized by One Health Commission. And these are our <clears throat> address on the social media and Gmail. <laughs> Can you change the slide, please? Are you there? Yes, we were seeing um, pictures of activities. Yeah, we have been uh, uh, working on the global health issues and we have been involved in activities like uh, public uh, awareness on genesis to the students, uh, local community people, uh, government officers, primary school teachers, and we are also organizing different types of uh, free animal health camps to the needy farmers around. And we are also organizing different types of vaccination program uh, against rabies, uh, PPR, FMD. And we are collaborating with the other, other health organizations and public health offices uh, to work on the global health issues in our region. That's what we are doing. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. And I've had the honor to come visit your One Health student group, and it's really exciting to see all that you've accomplished. Yes, thank you very much. Are, next presentation will be from students for One Health, UC Davis. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, you sound great. Good morning from California. 
My name is Nicole Cady. I'm a third year veterinary student at UC Davis and a co-president of Students for One Health here at Davis. Stacy Kim, one of our symposium coordinators, is also on this call. I'm so excited to be speaking with you all today, and I've really enjoyed all the presentations so far. With that, I'll do my best to give a quick picture of Students for One Health at UC Davis. Next slide, please. Our club, one second here. Our club is based at the UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine, and our core officer team listed here are all UC Davis veterinary students, plus our three Davis faculty advisors. The UC Davis Medical School also has a One Health student group, and we regularly communicate with them. Their campus is about 20 miles away in Sacramento. Here in Davis, we also work with several Davis graduate students in environmental sciences and engineering. Also, very conveniently, the UC Davis One Health Institute is located about 100 feet from our veterinary lecture hall. So we have the privilege of working closely with faculty there. Next slide, please. On to the fun stuff. These are the projects we've been up to here at Davis. So these projects are all student run. Um, the first is our Knights Landing One Health Clinic. So at this clinic, students and clinicians of both veterinary and human medicine work alongside each other to see human and animal patients in the same facility in an un underserved community located in Knights Landing, California, which is about 20 minutes from Davis. The MOSAIC project, MOSAIC stands for Models of One Health Solutions in Action in Communities, is a grassroots program started and continued by UC Davis veterinary students that focuses on community development, education, and empowerment through a One Health approach. They conduct risk assessment surveys, workshops, and research, then implement relevant projects based on community needs. In the past, they've worked in Sabana Grande in Nicaragua and in various communities in Southern California. The One Health Symposium is in its sixth year now, and it's a one-day event held annually, annually on One Health Day. This past symposium was themed Resilient Solutions for a Growing Population, and we held interactive panel discussions on antimicrobial resistance, environmental sustainability, and emerging infectious diseases with an interdisciplinary and international group of speakers and an audience of 130 people. We're now brainstorming topics for the sixth annual symposium, which this year will be held at the Davis Medical Campus. And um, that will be held on One Health Day in November. We also host lunch talks at the veterinary school on various One Health topics. We have an annual dog and jog, which is a five to 10K race where humans and canines alike can get some exercise. And coming soon, we're hoping to start publishing a One Health podcast. Uh, that's all I have for you. If you have any specific questions about any of those projects or want to reach out to our club, my email looks like did not make it onto the slide, um, but my email is nlkd at ucdavis.edu. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Keep up the fantastic work, and we look forward to your One Health podcast. Our next presentation will be from the Udayana One Health Student Club in Indonesia. Check, check, check. We can hear you. Check. Okay. Um, good day, everyone. Uh, I'm Dinda. I'm, I'm from Veterinary Medicine in Udayana University and my partner. Hello, everyone. My name is Vanessa. I'm from Medical Faculty of Udayana University. Okay. Uh, firstly, let me introduce our club. Uh, Udayana One Health Student Club is the first One Health Club in Indonesia. 
It's a platform for students from various background studies to learn and apply one health concept as part of their professional competencies. Batch one has engaged students from medicine, partner, public health, and physiotherapy. Students are encouraged to express their ideas through collab collaboration. Uh, you can see our activity in our social media, uh, Udayana One Health Student Club Bali or Udayana OHCC. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, in our club, we have two main activity in class training and laboratory experience. In class training, it consists of presentation from young professional as well as exercise and case study. This activity aims to lead students into update issues in one health along with soft skills developed. It focuses on one health concept, collaboration, and partnership. And the second is laboratory experience. In order to identify and detect health problems, the capacity of professional in laboratory is vital. So our club provides lab experience, which is help us in handling lab activity. Um, next project will present for my partner, Vanessa. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, so besides class training and laboratory activities, we also have two projects as our commitment to community. First, we have meningitis streptococcus Swiss prevention. Uh, as we know, Bali has a traditional dish called lawar. This food uh, may reach the community because of the raw pork and blood as its ingredients. Therefore, we empower housewives to encourage them in community action. We teach them how to cook raw pork and its entrail in a proper way. Next, we have a project to improve Sifat Toffee Farmers awareness uh, of personal protective equipment. Luang Kafi is one of the most well-known coffee in the world. Uh, this coffee is extracted from the Luang's vessels. So that's why we try to educate the farmers to use personal protective equipment to prevent zoonosis disease. Besides socialization, we also conduct a research to identify what kind of microorganisms that may harm the farmers. The outcome of this project is also helping to ensure the quality of the coffee itself. Uh, after a success in batch one, we want to achieve several milestones in the batch two. First, uh, we want to develop in education, research, and community as one health generation. Second, we try to expand the network and extend the collaboration. Okay, that's all for our presentation. If you want to know more about us, don't hesitate to reach us on our social media and website. Thank you. Salam sehat, one help. Thank you so much for sharing. It's great to also see that you're empowering local communities about One Health. Our next group here, um, unfortunately, was unable to make it, but we would just like everyone to know that there is a One Health group um, in Spain and it's through their Erasmus Mundus Joint Master Degree Program. Um, we'll move on for now, but we'll get some contact information for them if you would like to contact them in the future. Our next group presenting is from Kuzar University in Azerbaijan. Hawa, could you please raise your hand? Oh, it looks like you're self-muted. If you could click on your microphone. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello, good morning, everybody. My name is Hawad Lee, a PhD candidate at Qatar University located in Baku, Azerbaijan. Uh, and it's the top-ranked university among Azerbaijan universities with undergraduate, graduate, and PhD degree program. Uh, it has the uh, school as well, Dunya School, and we together, Qatar University and Dunya School, Established one health association. Um, here are the uh, link of our website and social media account. Uh, can you change the slide, please? 
uh, um, I'm going to uh, explain you a little bit uh, about our activities um, uh, that uh, I've everyone know that uh, 3rd of November uh, is One Health Day and, and we have many seminars and uh, symposiums regarding to this event. Uh, although we are going to um, organizing, uh, we are organizing annual international conferences on One Health uh, problem and solutions. Um, as you can see in the uh, picture below, uh, it was the first international conference, uh, which was on 1st and 2nd uh, June 2018, uh, uh, with the active participation of our PhD and uh, bachelor students. Uh, the second uh, international conference is going to be on uh, 24th and 25th of May this year, 2019. Uh, and I'm also inviting you to join us. Uh, the deadline for the abstract submission is uh, April 20. Uh, you can see the brochure of our um, uh, One Health Second International Conference on the right top of the slide. Uh, also, we have uh, three credit courses on uh, One Health for uh, non-medical areas, uh, like for engineering faculties and others. Uh, in order to speed uh, One Health information. Uh, we are also doing research in different fields related to One Health, uh, especially AMR, antimicrobial resistance. Uh, and he, we have uh, research teams, including me. Uh, we are evaluating uh, antimicrobial resistance in human and animals. Uh, as you see in picture, uh, we have got really good results, uh, which we are going to publish it sooner. Um, so that was a brief information about our club. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, and it's great to learn about your One Health course as well. Welcome. We will now be hearing from Georgia Southern in the United States. Sarah, could you raise your hand? Awesome. Good morning and afternoon and evening, everyone. So am I good to start? Yes, go ahead. Awesome. Loud and clear. OK, so this has been an amazing webinar so far, hearing the various ways One Health in action is being addressed all over the world. It's so beautiful to see everyone sounds so welcoming and I would love to collaborate, of course, moving forward. So we just started a One Health organization this past fall, fall 2018, at Georgia Southern University. Uh, Georgia Southern University is about three hours away from the CDC in Atlanta. It's it's great to see other Georgia universities uh, in this webinar as well. One Health is really important to us. Uh, we're very passionate about it on Georgia Southern's campus. Now, we also have uh, here, the pictures here are our tabling event this year at the Spring Organization Fair. And uh, we're just meeting people, getting some campus outreach there uh, we have a sign for one health for me and my pets so in the united states um, one of our focuses for one health includes pets and uh, it's really neat to see how one health is is has different priorities everywhere it's so neat uh, we have our goals for our organization include collaboration, so inter-organizational collaboration with biology, um, environmental, pre-vet, pre-med students. We actually are trying to get more undergraduate students included in our membership this year. That's our goal for this, this year of the organization. Um, the organization was founded by Doctorate of Public Health or DRPH students. That's what I am. I'm a DRPH student in epidemiology and One Health. Our advisor actually went to UC Davis, the One Health Institute, Dr. Jessica Schwind, and she is leading One Health on Georgia Southern University's campus. She's very passionate about One Health, just as I am. Um, she actually organized a One Health course this past fall. So we'll have it again in the upcoming fall, give students on campus an opportunity to learn about One Health. 
Um, we're doing campus outreach programs. Our next meeting will have an outbreak scenario and response in the, the through the lens of One Health. We'll have hopefully uh, intersectoral, like multi collaborational clubs come and talk about ways in which their respective um, careers would be involved in a One Health outbreak. And we're also organizing a One Health research workshop for April. And that workshop will be focused on the steps of research from the introduction to the methods, results, discussion, um, how to put together manuscript as well, and, and uh, planning research through the lens of One Health. I know we heard a bunch of undergraduates say they'd love to learn more about how research is conducted. And uh, we are also participating in National Public Health Week in April of this year. We're leading the Monday of that week, which is Healthy Communities. So we're going to push One Health, the One Health agenda, as much as possible on that day. Now, we're also planning, starting our planning for this fall for the One Health Day in November. Oh, and I almost forgot, Earth Day 2019 is in April. Uh, and this year it's protect our species. So that's a great outlet for One Health as well. So we're just getting started, but we're really excited to expand our club and we are happy to collaborate with anyone. Um, Dr. Schwinn does research in Nepal. So getting uh, in contact with One Health Nepal would be really exciting. So if you guys wanna uh, chat, we can do that as well. And if y'all are interested in reaching out, please feel free to email us at onehealtheagles at gmail.com. So, thank you. Congrats on starting up your group and targeting undergrads. Um, it's great to hear your enthusiasm. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. We will now have the One Health Club of MUST, M-U-S-T chapter from Uganda present. Are you here? Can you please raise your hand if you will be presenting on behalf of this group? Once again, do we have the One Health Club must chapter from Uganda here? Last call. All right, we're going to circle back to you at the end of these presentations. One Health Columbia, are you here? We're ready for your presentation. Please raise your hand if you'll be presenting. I think it's Jessica. Go ahead, Jessica. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, first of all, I'm going to do a brief introduction of the One Health Columbia members. Dr. Juan Carlos Carrascal Velasquez. He is currently the leader and manager of the One Health Colombia, and he's also a teacher of the University of Cordoba. My name is Jessica Botero Serna. I'm a veterinary medicine and cell technics student at the University of Cordoba as well in Colombia. I'm one of the One Health Colombia students leader, and I work together with One Health Colombia students leader, Jorge Gonzalez, who is studying administration in finance and international business, also at the University of Cordoba. So as you can notice, we apply the interdisciplinary work from every perspective. We, uh, we include undergraduate and graduate students, not just from veterinary, although we started with the veterinary faculty from the University of Cordoba. We work with human, animal, and environmental topics. In the University of Cordoba, we have different institutes, such as the Institute of Biological Research of the Tropic, or IBT, where we work research on Zika, Chikungunya, influenza, tropical diseases, and other zoonotic diseases, not, not only in wildlife, but in domestic animals. We also work with community awareness. We also try to, in, to involve in this process in different communities, different people, not just students, every person counts. So we have also a theater club 
that per, that do some performance of the Colombian indigenous myths or, or stories. We've also been making contact with different universities to make a bridge that links every corner of Colombia and encourage everyone to work together in every one health aspects. Please, the next slide. So we've been making many different events, but the first official One Health event was the first One Health International Symposium at the University of Cordoba in Monteria. There, it should be noted that since that date, we developed the One Health, uh, we started with the process of the One Health Colombia as a group member of the One Health Alliance with the approval and acknowledgement of the One Health Latin America Brazil leader, Christina Petenbrewer, who also was part of the interdisciplinary speaker panel of the One Health International Symposium with more than 20 other people of different professions and different universities. Since that day on, we've, made, we've been making so many different events, including, including the One Health concept so we basically try to develop every aspect of the One Health concept with these different events, such as the first meeting of environmental groups of educational institutions by HEDFAS, the healthcare workday, academic workday of animal welfare. We had a conversatory of importance of creating public politics of animal protection and animal welfare in Monteria. And so yeah, basically that we try to link every Columbia corner. So I saw so many different universities of Colombia, such as La Salle and the University of Antioquia. So we, we're looking forward to work with every institution and every person in Colombia who is interested in One Health and also around the world. And this year we'll, we'll be helping another One Health International Symposium. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. This is such exciting work and it's great to see all your posters and everything in action. Next, we will be hearing from Makere University in Uganda and their Student One Health Innovation Club. Victor, are you here? Go ahead, Victor. We had your audio working earlier, Victor. We can't hear you at the moment. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, that's better. OK. Uh, my name is Musime Victor. I'm um, a fifth year veterinary medicine student at Macquarie University, and currently, uh, though I would hand over power soon, I'm the president of the One Health Club. Uh, this One Health Club was uh, uh, initiated in 2013 uh, under the initiatives of Oshea Uganda, which is One Health uh, for Central and Eastern Africa, and also in, in partnership with USAID. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, uh, our club was founded in 2013, and we run on a purely multidisciplinary One Health approach. You'd be wondering what I meant, what I mean by this. I mean we involve as many disciplines, as many diverse disciplines as possible. Uh, currently, the club membership strikes about 600 students, and uh, these are students do, doing uh, various courses at the university. Uh, some of whom do uh, health science related courses like veterinary medicine, like myself, those who do public health, uh, public health, those who do uh, medical, uh, human medicine and surgery, those who do lab laboratory sciences. Then we also have the non health scientist related courses, the, so the social sciences, the psychology and other arts related courses. Uh, what we do. Basically, uh, we've 
had a chain of activities and I would say I'm very sorry that I did not depict as much of what we do as possible because I thought two slides would be better. I didn't, I didn't want to be with a lot of detail. We do community-based outreaches, for example. We recently did uh, a rabies, we always do rabies awareness and vaccination campaigns. And uh, this time around, uh, last year's rabies and uh, awareness and vaccination campaign managed to be one of the uh, those selected by the One Health Commission. Uh, so we were co-winners uh, with the Iowa State University for the Global One Health Day Award. Uh, we also do water and sanitation hygiene, community sensitization and awareness uh, in so many places. Um, we also organize conferences. We attend conferences. We sponsor and uh, support our students, student members to attend these conferences. We organize seminars and trainings still on One Health. Recently, we had one on Global Health Security Agenda, and I'm sure the students and the student members are at par with that. We also, uh, we are under, we, we are advantaged by uh, OSHEA that we, we can have what we call the One Health Field Attachment Cohort, which admits students uh, for about a month, uh, allows them to be taken through theoretical One Health principles, and also gives chance for them to attend a two weeks field attachment where they are to put the theory, the theory on One Health to use, uh, uh, during which people come up with interventions to One Health challenges. Uh, students have come up, uh, we've put up tippy taps where we go. We've uh, made uh, soap and uh, liquid, uh, soap and disinfectant dispensers out of bottles. Uh, and yeah, we've also done so many other things. Ours is a growing network, and we, we anticipate that by 2020, we shall have a membership of about 900. Our major challenges are publicity. Uh, we realize that people are never interested in health messages, and so we take it, we took to social media under the Mark the Mark or Share page. You can get us on Facebook, and uh, I think I'm. Um, open and uh, glad if I could partner with any other club members, rather any other One Health clubs and uh, One Health institutes and organizations worldwide. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's all I have. Thank you for sharing. Such exciting work. It's always great to hear the updates. We will now be hearing from GSU Brazil. Can you please raise your hand if you will be speaking on behalf of this group? Hi. Hello. Hello, my name is Micaela. Hello, Micaela. Thanks for coming to present today. We'd love to hear about your group. I'm from Brazil, and the name of our group is Jesu and stands for Group. Study, study group of One Health. We are the, from the Pont Pontifical Catholic University of Paraná, located in the city of Curitiba. Our club is composed by veterinary studies and professors. Can you pass, please? This is some actions. Uh, our club is composed by veterinarians and, prof and professors. Uh, so this photo is about an uh, action we did at Ilha das Peças. Uh, this island ecosystem has had an impact and overpopulation of dogs from the island has grown to rival the space with native animals. So we made a castration effort. This project was part of a scientific research of a student of veterinary. So members of our study group volunteer to be, a, to be part of this action. Another actions of our group is weekly meetings with lectures and we have some scientific research too. We have a scientific research of um, antimicrobial resistance too. 
So this is our group. Thank you. Congrats on all of these activities. Thank you for sharing with us today. We will now be hearing from the One Health Université de Montagne in Cameroon. Are you here? Can you please raise your hand if you will be presenting on behalf of this group? Once again, anyone here from Université de Montagne? We will also circle back to the other groups that did not have a representative. Is anyone here from the University of Connecticut? From the Cimerlo de Investigación Una Salud in Colombia group? And the One Health Club MUST chapter of Uganda. If you are from any of those groups, please raise your hand and we will have you present. Does not look like anyone is here. Oh, um, yes, Musime? Yes. Uh, yes, it's Victor again. I happen to uh, be at the inception of uh, the One Health chapter at Mbara University. We are the ones who gave them uh, the idea to form a club there. We launched the club. So I, I, I don't know if it's OK with you if I present on their behalf. No, that's fantastic. Um, it's great to hear One Health um, collaboration stories. Okay. Emily, do you mind going back to those slides? It's the MUST chapter Uganda. Uh, yes. Like to tell us a bit, uh, that'd be great. The One Health Club of Mambara University of Science and Technology in Uganda was launched in uh, April last year, 2018. And uh, it was fostered by delegates from uh, our One Health Club in Makere University, uh, where we guided them on uh, a few things. For example, forming leadership structures, uh, reporting and answering structures still. Then on how they can best conduct the activities. Next slide, please. Yes, the, those are the contacts uh, of uh, uh, the email is uh, that of uh, Dr. Joseph Ngonzi. He's uh, the Dean School of Medicine at Mbara University, and he's also the focal person overseeing the club. Uh, that's their email address, and you can learn more about the university from the university website below. Next slide, please. Next slide, next slide, yes. Uh, yes, uh, that was uh, the One Health uh, Seminar organized to uh, find out the roles of students uh, from multidisciplinary backgrounds in uh, fostering One Health and in promoting and championing health. Uh, next slide, yes, that one. Yes, uh, basically told us about uh, the, the, the seminar that was organized uh, that was around uh, okay uh, well this is a one health challenge in focus uh, that's uh, indiscriminate and uh, poor waste disposal that's common here in Africa uh, mostly because of people not knowing what that uh, has uh, in effect to us and maybe to our soils uh, but uh, the one health club has done so many things uh, in Barra has uh, it has also included cleanup exercises. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, uh, that's the One Health Club executive in Ambara University. The lady to my the lady to my left is uh, the no no this other side to the right. Sorry. The lady to the right, uh, she's uh, the president, and she's called Ruth Grace Kakova. She's uh, a fifth-year student of human medicine and surgery, 
and uh, that's her team. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, some of uh, the activities uh, have included uh, capacity building workshops for awareness and publicity of uh, uh, One Health and also about uh, viral hemorrhagic fevers. We re you realize that Uganda is situated near the Congos or the Democratic Republic of Congo, which happens to be a hotspot over so many viral hemorrhagic fevers. And uh, so we are at risk of uh, getting these diseases coming into us. So we realize that uh, uh, that should be an activity that students should go out there and uh, sensitize and create awareness about the viral hemorrhagic fevers like Ebola, like Marburg, and uh, Rift Valley fever, and even the Congo Crimean hemorrhagic fever. Uh, some of the projects they're undertaking include uh, wash programs, uh, water and sanitation hygiene, uh, and uh, promoting uh, environmental health and sanitation around their university. This they have done by installing uh, dust bins uh, at so many points, and then uh, uh, that would help with the littering, uh, the littering habit around the university. Then they've also done conservation of River Ruizi. River Ruizi is a river. It, uh, it actually, it's actually very, very near to the university. And uh, yeah, we realized that uh, people were doing so many funny things around the river, uh, disposing of wastes just like they could. And so, and, and this has had so many effects on it, including it uh, flooding recently. And so students did something to, to that effect. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, uh, we work towards creating a coalition of global One Health leaders interested in infectious disease, threat, prevention, and mitigation. We are there to champion One Health. Uh, the motto at uh, the university is succeed, we must. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing, Victor. And I think this is a great place to end our student presentations as we, you are all champions in One Health. And thank you so much for presenting. We will be sharing all the slides and the recording of the webinar and the emails of presenters and student groups with all attendees of this webinar and also the greater East Soha community. We will now have a quick question and answer period if anyone has any overall questions about um, the webinar or any of the groups. Uh, and so how this will work, people might see, so many of you have already noticed the question box that you can type in um, any number of questions that you have. And um, a lot of them have actually already been answered. Um, there have been a lot of questions about if we're going to share this and uh, it's been just mistaken that we are. So thank you for that, Anastasia. But if anybody has any specific questions for um, either us on the executive committee um, or for other clubs that have been here or just in general, feel free to type those in. And we'll have maybe about five minutes to uh, do a Q&A period with those. One question I've seen come up uh, from, I believe, Nepal is uh, regarding how to go about acquiring funding. And uh, this is an issue for people in One Health, as Dr. Strauss stated earlier, for people at all levels of One Health, student and professional. Um, I guess speaking more anecdotally here in Iowa, it hasn't been a huge problem for us, but of course the socioeconomic situations will vary um, widely as far as the sort of funding climate around the rest of the world. Um, I'm kind of wondering if any other clubs uh, could raise their hand and perhaps offer some other uh, anecdotes, experience, or advice that they have as far as how to approach One, one Health fundraising. I would like to share um, some information that there was a webinar actually about funding for student groups that was led by Lauren Brierley. And we will include the link to that webinar in our email to all of you um, debriefing this webinar. So look out for that link. And we will even try and update resources um, as you so hot as well. That would be excellent. Thank you, Anastasia. Uh, it looks like uh, Asa Sharma, um, would you like to speak?
Hello. Yes, you have the mic, Aslan. Uh, I enjoyed the whole webinar session. Um, to add, and I look forward um, to remain connected globally and have some exchange program between the countries, which would provide the great learning experience and culture exchange as well. And furthermore, I felt very much glad that uh, One Health Organization at Go Georgia mentioned uh, One Health Nepal. Actually, we are working in the two different regions. One Health Nepal is one at Rampur and One Health Nepal is one another at Pakliava. We will surely mail you and shall connect uh, to the One Health uh, organization at Georgia. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Asta. Um, and I also to go, to go further about um, One Health funding, um, reaching out to professional organizations that uh, the veterinary professional groups, um, either on a regional, national, um, continental, or even global level, um, can help to provide funding for organizations. Uh, so veterinary medical groups, human medical groups, uh, research consortia, those all are viable sources of funding. Um, but again, we will attach that uh, previous webinar that Lauren Briarly had hosted a couple of years back. Are there any uh, new burning questions that we have in the question chat window? Oh, it looks like uh, somebody is wondering, um, for those student groups that have organized a symposium, what was this process like and what advice do you have for student groups that are looking to do something like this? Um, so I was actually given the, given the privilege to present on something like this at last year's Student American Veterinary Medical Association Symposium. Um, and we can actually send out the PowerPoint presentation I made for that um, as well, alongside all the other things we'll be sending out after this webinar to our attendees. Um, one of the biggest first things you need to do is to identify other people who are into One Health. Uh, those are going to be your, your keys to power. So basically friends who are very passionate about planning because that's definitely not something you want to undertake on your own. Um, you want to identify faculty as well who are passionate about it, who can help you navigate the university systems. Um, a lot of it is just planning very, very far ahead, being very open with your university and your university administrators in order to get resources, room, um, and all those other sorts of log logistical requirements that are needed to put on um, a symposia or a, or a event of any sort. Um, funding is nice because food really, really does help attract people to these sorts of events. Um, and if people, if you're in an area where it doesn't seem like people really get one health, so to speak, or at least they don't get it yet. Um, that can be, of course, something to help draw them in and then get them into the One Health fold and explain it, what, what it is to them. Um, those, are, those are some of the biggest things about planning a One Health conference. Does that kind of answer your question, Alexia? Uh, yes, yes, it is. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. Um, it looks like there's a question for uh, UGA right now. So if you'd like to go and open your mic, UGA, whoever your representative is, um, can you ask or can you answer the question of uh, how did groups who started at the university level garner political support such as the Iowa One Health Month? Or am I misreading that question? Is that coming from UGA? I believe that, that, that the latter is the case. Um, so regarding uh, the Iowa One Health Month, it was, uh, we actually have a packet, uh, uh, prepared uh, letter of, of sorts basically on how to actually go about doing that. Um, it was a little bit more of, an, of a USA specific thing because it was specifically working with a governor of, of a state within the United States. Um, so it, it might be more relevant to focus on a province or, or a secondary political subdivision within anyone else's country. But we do have that, um, that information packet and we can definitely send it out with our materials after this, after this webinar. Um, as far as engaging people, basically it, it, you need to find contacts within the governance. It's really all about who you know, or at least that's a large portion of it. And Cheryl will tell you the exact same thing. Dr. Stroud will tell you the exact same thing. Um, so really building up that network expanding, um, reaching out to people 
asking people who important contacts are, then asking those people who important contacts are is really the name of the game with all of this One Health stuff. That's how a lot of these collaborations and um, events end up actually happening in the first place. And another question about, about collecting funds. Um, yeah, we'll be sending out uh, some information about fundraising uh, after, the, after the webinar. Hi, Neil. This is um, Cheryl Stratt again. Can I just make a quick comment? Absolutely. So um, I just want to be sure everybody realizes that um, any One Health event that you lead any time during the year can be registered as a One Health Day celebration for that year and get a pin on the One Health Day map. It doesn't have to be right on November 3rd. The only time there's a restriction on when your event can be held is if you're a student team wanting to compete. And then there is a window that, that the student event has to, um, to fall within to compete. But so many things that you guys are doing um, all through the year um, could and should be registered as One Health Day events to be sure that you get a pin on the map and kind of help see the world how much uh, how, show the world how much one uh, celebration is being done of One Health. So that was one comment. And then I have a question too, if that's okay. Yeah, go for it. So very early on in the um, in the webinar, I think it was Tufts. It might have been the first group, uh, but this question applies to everybody. Um, they were talking about doing um, Earth Day and One Health Night, and my question is. Uh, and I know this is a funding situation, but have they been able to like make T-shirts, One Health um, T-shirts, so that the public can see and they're kind of educating, you know, beyond the people maybe in the immediate vicinity, but they're walking around with T-shirts with the words One Health on it, so that maybe they spike curiosity in the public because that's been kind of one of our challenges is getting our education about One Health beyond the academic realms. And, you know, we've talked a lot to each other, but getting the news out to the public is a, a big question. So just wonder if groups have been able to, to do that. I saw some of it in the slides. Thanks for that question, Dr. Stroud. This is Evan, again, from the um, Students for One Health group at Tufts. And specifically to your question, um, when we were doing the Worcester cleanup, we were actually working with another community organization in Worcester last year. Um, so I think there were t-shirts, but I think it was, I don't remember the name of the organization off the top of my head, but it was about Earth Day. But one thing is um, we as a club actually reached out to the One Health Commission um, earlier in the year to see about specifically making t-shirts with that logo. Um, and I guess my question is maybe there would be an opportunity to either design a new um, sort of One Health design that all these groups could have access to in terms of uh, creating t-shirts and then obviously having their specific club on it. Um, or can we use the One Health Commission logo or something? Because the struggle that we had is um, sort of coming up with a logo that would be easy to put on t-shirts. So I guess I could, um, yeah, ask that question about whether we could either use the commission logo or maybe um, create a logo. Evan, absolutely. In fact, I'm working with an organization right now that's already got some of those options that I can send you guys link to, links to. But also, um, I'm sure Isoha is very, very happy for you to use the Isoha logo, which is kind of a, oh, I love it. It's kind of a takeoff on the commission's logo. And so if I missed an email from you asking for permission, I apologize, but don't ever hesitate to keep pinging me to keep, um, to get attention because um, I'm happy to have you guys use the commission's logo um, anytime. Okay, yeah, that's great. I mean, I'm actually, um, and Neil, and we can talk about this more. I'm one of the North American reps for ESOHA. Um, so maybe one of our sort of efforts here going forward is to promote the use of that logo for t-shirts and, and different club activities. Perfect, excellent. Yeah, and we're working through some of the, sorry, Evan, we're gonna say something else. No, 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 just, just saying thank you to Dr. Shred. Okay. Um, and one of the things that I don't think is going to be huge as far as legal considerations, but uh, I'm, I'm fairly certain that we are potentially rolling out 
um, or we'll be rolling out in the future ESOHA sort of products and t-shirts and stuff as well, along with, uh, or through the means that Cheryl's been talking about with her own um, branded products. Is that correct, Dr. Stroud? Absolutely. The the group that I'm working with is happy to promote, to, to kind of be the go-between for creating all sorts of One Health gear for us. So we'd love to have anybody who's interested in being involved in that help us with that. Yeah, so getting a branding of that One Health just as a, as a movement, as a concept, is going to be huge, and that's going to be a big part of that. Um, also, to address the question of, uh, and we'll try just to take a, a few more questions, uh, just because we're running a little bit long here. Um, as far as working with the public or getting the word out to the public, uh, attached in that uh, gubernatorial proclamation or that One Health advocacy document that we're going to be sending out at the end of this webinar, um, linked to that and briefly explaining that as well, is how you can actually have a press release. Um, and if you're doing any One Health event at all, um, use that as a guide or just Google how to write up a press release um, to send to press outlets, newspapers, radio stations, TV stations, whatever. Um, they'll, they'll have contacts for that for you to send press releases to um, about your event. And I mean, if it's exciting enough, if, they, if it's a new day or a new cycle in which it really fits with everything else, um, they might pick up on it and they might actually give you some exposure to just the general public, which would be really great. Um, it looks like Dr. Pettenborough, did you have your hand raised about anything? All right, it looks it looks like not. Um, I think that uh, it's about time for us to to wrap up um, the Q and A session, and maybe we should get moving on uh, to a couple announcements about what we're doing and what we'll be rolling out and moving forward within USOHA within the next few weeks and months and uh, even further than that. Yes, we have just two quick announcements before we close today. Um, one is to make sure that your student group is on our master list and the One Health Commission's master list of global groups. Um, here's a map of all of the groups currently on that list. Here is the Google spreadsheet for you to input your information and just make sure that your information there is updated about your group. And if your group is currently not on there, please add them. And we will also send this link in our follow up email to all attendees. And I'm sorry to jump in here. Um, there is one question that is of, of high relevance that just came up. Um, University of Aloran just asked if there's a platform where all One Health reps can interact and get suggestions for improvements and uh, just collaborate in general and learn from one another. And uh, WhatsApp was suggested specifically here. Um, we do have uh, our Facebook One Health community page. Uh, it's, the, so it's specifically ESOHA One Health community. And I believe we're gonna be changing the sort of restrictions and permissions on, permissions on that soon to make it so that everybody can post and that is um, as opposed to our main One Health ESOHA page that is specifically for, for updates and uh, sorts of news releases from the executive committee and from, uh, you know, from ESOHA itself. Um, if that is not a good platform for the rest of the world, if, if the adoption rate or whatever for Facebook is just too low, um, we can certainly consider reworking that and making a WhatsApp group or whatever. Um, but if we can get emails um, or, or Facebook comments Specifically, specifically on whether you agree with or disagree with having either a Facebook or a WhatsApp, um, that would be really excellent because that's something that is very important to our mission and something that we really want to make sure we're getting right in the future. And we, we can uh, repost some of this Q&A. Uh, actually, it'll be part of this video uh, session, so part of this video recording that answers your question, ha uh, when. So sorry to, to interrupt the uh, the most recent session, but uh, do we have uh, Pallavi with an next announcement? Yeah, um, so one new um, kind of activity that we wanted to put out um, was an ESOHA journal club. And this would be a journal club that is conducted um, completely on Facebook. So um, the ESOHA One Health Community Facebook group that Neil was just mentioning, um, what we're planning to do is monthly posting an article and this will be led by 
um, our secretary, Sue Lagna. Um, and so she'll, she has a few articles selected for the first couple of months, um, but I'm sure she's willing to take any suggestions. Um, but she'll post those and give a couple weeks and then um, start the discussion on that um, Facebook group. Um, so we will see how that goes in terms of um, if that's a platform that people are able to discuss um, and it's accessible to everybody. Um, but we think this will be a great way to start that conversation among all the groups. Um, so we will be posting that either later today um, or tomorrow. So if you are not already in that Facebook group, um, definitely join that. And this is also not only for students, it's for anybody who would like to participate in the discussion. And with that, I'd like to conclude our 2019 Who's Who in Students for One Health webinar. Thank you all so much for attending. I'd especially like to thank Mujan of Kazar University for her help in, in organizing this webinar and Dr. Stroud for her inspiring words. I'd also like to thank each group who has presented for sharing the incredible work they have done in One Health. It's been so exciting to hear about your projects, past, present, and future. And I'm so excited to work together to help overcome the challenges we all face in One Health. I hope you all will continue to stay involved in ESOHA. Please be on the lookout for our new projects on our Facebook page, website, and listserv. Again, we'll be sharing the recording of this webinar and are also working on translating it to broaden our scope to a more global level. Have a great rest of your day and thank you again so much for attending.